Wait, what's that? Oh, okay, a closer. So, like, what do they represent? Because, like, looking at it, it looks a bit like it's wearing a, a dress, at least to me. Like one of those old school dresses, like a lesser was supposed to wear. Like a little. Let's kind of have a look on this one. See so if you look at the legs, it's got like a white collar. You know, like a, a pilgrim outfit. And like she's wearing, or like it's wearing long boots. Interesting. So like, so like you can see the, the collar there, and there's like the back of the dress, see? At least that's a little how it looks to me. I don't know if I'm way up with that. I feel like we, I think I mentioned it before, but I feel like we've free the, oh, the symbolism is a lot more loose. Can I get the key, please? Yes, we need this. It's like the, the symbolism is a lot more loose with three than two. Or maybe that's just because I haven't really explored it as much or read up on it as much as twos. And it isn't as uh, like vital to the story as twos is. Um, so essentially, the way we make progress here is um, if you remember the dream sequence I talked about, it's similar. Um, I didn't explain the dream sequence before, but essentially in that we're starting here and the way you wake up from the dream is you either die uh, by like walking off a physical hazard um, or dying by a monster um, or you can get hit by a roller coaster. You keep making progress and going further into the park um, and you get onto the track of a roller coaster and then get knocked off by the roller coaster and then you wake up. Um, here, once we get to this point in, in the game, that's essentially what we need to do. We need to follow that same progress point. But in the real world version, we can get the key we just got, which wasn't available in the dream, to turn off the roller coaster so we can make progress. Um, the only problem is, or the, the troll with it is, um, even if you turn off the roller coaster, it turns itself back on and like comes at you down the track. So you just have to, uh, ever ends up jumping off the track to avoid it. But we can survive is essentially the difference. Because if you don't turn off the roller coaster, you just die to it. interesting the bodies hanging about this is very very Silent Hill 1 how is that not killing it okay and there's another one somewhere Oh, there it is. So yeah, this area of the game is a lot more like Silent Hill 1. Like the body, the, the way the bodies are positioned. I know in Silent Hill 2 you found a lot of corpses like around the town. But I don't think, did, did the, the Nightmare World have like hanging corpses like this? I don't think it did. I could be wrong, it's been a while. Been like a year or two, a year and a half since my playthrough. Or since I actually recorded it. Um I was gonna say. Yeah, the bodies in three are a lot more like the the bodies in one, the use of them sort of thing. 
Which is interesting. Yeah, this whole sequence is just a, another example of the game really trolling you. Because, like, you have to do exactly what you do in the dream sequence that gets you killed. But, like, you turn off the roller coaster first and it still happens to you, you know? Like, how messed up is that? Third. <laughs> I love that look she's giving. Like it's a genuine surprise there's a roller coaster coming down the track. Although I guess it would be if you turn off the roller coaster. You think it would stay off. Oh, got scene time. Because her true self had not yet awoken. She carries God within her. But when Alessa, mother of God, truly awakens... Yeah? What's going to happen? She will usher in the eternal paradise. <laughs> what kind of place is that? A place with no pain. No hunger. No sickness. No old age. There will be no greed or war, and all will live by God's grace alone. No this, no that, no nothing. A paradise for castrated sheep, maybe. Sounds pretty boring. I pity you. You still don't understand. You're going to kill me? Is it really so easy for you? I've done it before. <laughs> then I truly do pity you. So does Mary Elizabeth Gling sing all the songs in this? Because I think it's her in all those songs, isn't it? Sounds like it. It's very curious. But yeah, um, Claudia has a very End of Evangelion type view of Paradise. And I think I agree with like Vincent and uh, Douglas. Because like, I I don't think that sounds very nice. <laughs> like, it it sort of sounds like hell, to be honest. Like, I don't think, like, a, a world without greed and war would be better, but at the same time, like, it, it does sort of feel like End of Evangelion type paradise, where it's just, like, we're all one big homogenous blob, you know, <laughs> um, rather than individual people. And that sounds awful. Oh, I like this bit. Welcome to the Borley Haunted. There we go. We're so glad you came. Sort of reminds me of is it Spooky's Haunted Mansion Look on Steam? When you feel you're ready, then go through the door. 
Which I guess is the point, because it's that sort of haunted house feel, isn't it? Like, this is how real-life haunted houses feel, or, you know, real-life haunted house attractions feel. Oh God! In this room. Oh, the cries of the children. The murderer was caught. Do you know why he said he killed his family? Because I felt I had to. Anyway, I'm lying. It's all just a joke. <laughs> I wanted to scare you. That's all. The truth is, only one person died by suicide. Oh, that's brilliant. I love that. You should use the uh, capture camera to like inf uh, to emphasize it. Oh. Can we go back? No? Okay. I think we go this way. Oh dear. Yeah, I think this is the, the bit I mentioned before, where the ceiling comes down. That's brilliant. And you have to use the fact that when you, you aim your gun, you're slightly crouched to save you from dying. Although, having said that, I think it's okay on normal, but like on... Uh, I think it's the hard difficulty, the hard action difficulty that you have to crouch. I could be wrong, Jay. Oh yeah, this is disturbing. I have no idea what this is, but it's really creepy. This light just follows you. Oh, oh, oh. And if it touches you, it kills you instantly. And this is just the same room, like upside down. Like what the hell? I do love this bit of the game though, because it's so weird. And there we go. Yeah, like this whole game just feels like, feels like uh, one big troll at times. Because so much about it is just designed to wind you up and to catch you off guard. It's like the the stuff with the 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 train platform where you get knocked off it onto the the tracks and you have to get back up suddenly, and then you also have to at one point. You get the game basically tells you or shows you that you need to get to a door that's on the tracks, and then when you try and you, you get on the tracks to get to the door, a train starts coming towards you, or like you hear the sound of a train, and it's just like this is the whole game. Like it just keeps messing with you constantly, and the the mansion just seems like the the ultimate culmination in. in uh, well, of that, like all of it, just it seems designed to to mess with you and to to make you feel unsafe. I really love it. <laughs> 